Hello. How are you feeling? It's tough now. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely disappointed, right? I think. Yeah, and also just like feels like it, I still feel like playing, you know. I feel like <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really feel like we're out. Uh, <laughs> it also just made it kind of weird with the pause at the end. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm. Yeah, I'm a bit all all over the place to be honest. Yeah, your head's like scrambled a bit. Did the, do you think the pause kind of killed your momentum a bit? I mean, I think it was tough after the fight, probably. But it's like, always weird, like as a pro player, whenever you get eliminated from whatever tournament you're in. Like whether it be worlds or like i mean i've been eliminated from groups in worlds so i know how that feels um you know eliminated from your domestic tournament whatever if you're no longer competing it's always the weirdest on the day after like today when they wake up that's always the weirdest because when you're in like when you're in the competition you just have this idea of like oh everything that's going to happen in the future you're like oh okay i'm gonna scrim today um we have these scrims and we're gonna travel like you have like this whole plan and then when it all ends it's like today it's like what the f do you do that's always the weirdest part. It's like w when they wake up today, when Caps wakes up today, it's like, I guess I'll just play solo queue, I guess. And then you play solo queue and it's a super unfulfilling. So your whole routine is completely shattered. So how do you act like this is the weirdest part about being a pro player. It's like, so I guess I just like, I'll just try to play solo queue and keep my form and we'll run it back next year. Just feels very like hopeless. It's so draining, bro. It's actually giga depressing, to be honest. Like they really managed to clutch it out in the end. Uh, it was looking quite good for us. Uh, I think after that, they were definitely going to get Baron, and which kind of helped them a lot with the Drake setup. And I think we kind of trolled the last last fight a bit, right? And they're giving them the inips and stuff. Yeah. Um, but it definitely felt like they had a lot of pressure with the match. Everyone's so proud of you. Like, seriously, you played your heart out. I'm sorry to be sad. I need to put your mic a bit closer to no. your mouth. Um, everyone's super proud of you. Like, um, the rise pick was great. It felt like you guys, even though you were down in goals, your, your comp was just really strong in the front to back. The Tarek was good, mm -hmm. but. What was about? What was that Baron call about? After you won the fight, right? You went towards Baron and you took this huge skirmish. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we. I mean, I don't remember exactly. I feel like the Baron was just good, bro. I feel like they just misexecuted the Baron. I think it was a very good call. I think that their comp does Baron extremely well. You have to really understand. I, th I think the the biggest thing that helps you as like a co-streamer or just somebody who watches a lot of League is like putting champions into buckets and remembering what champions are good at when they come back into the meta, even if they haven't been played for a long period of time. You have to do this as a pro player all the time because the meta is going to shift. And then when the meta shifts, there's always some reason why the meta shifts. And then once the meta shifts, there's always the counter meta to what the meta has shifted to that you can like easily slot in. So if, you know, for example, champions like Orianna come back, right? Like you should instantly have in your mind, okay, Orianna comes back. Orianna is really strong laning, but... One of the weaknesses of Oriana is like the range. So historically, long range artillery counters Oriana. So like, is Zerath playable? Like, AP Kogma mid used to be a thing way back in the day. You know, can we outrange it with something like Huey? Like, these are things that you should just like have in your mind. And when you have a champion like Rise, one of the strengths of Rise is how fast you take Baron. It's one of the fastest Baron taking champions in the game. That is one of the strengths. Like, you trade off a lot of things on Rise. You have the ability to rotate faster with your R. Um, you have relatively short range, so you're not that good if enemy team has a, a lot of range or it's very hard to get to them. Uh, but in this game, he's playing versus a lot of melee, so the Rise pick is good. And you have to just remember that, that Rise does Baron better than almost any other mage. Like, if you think about other mages, you have like Cassio, Azir, Rise, like these are the ones that actually destroy Baron. And when you have a Rise like that, you saw how fast they were doing it. In nine seconds, they burn 10k. So that means three, four more seconds, especially considering they have Rend and Smite, so they can burst at the end. Literally like two, three more seconds on the Baron, they just get the, the Baron for free and can leave. But they just misestimated. They, they, uh, they underestimated how much damage they could actually do to the Baron, and they overestimated how strong BLG was. The BLG contest was giga fake there, but they just didn't respect it situation but i think or th we had they overly respected it rather man advantage and i yeah. think we like uh, silas was dead for long i believe it was so, like someone was dead for long so we had at least like a man advantage and i think we also fought rumble tp ezreal was dead for long so the fight so if we fought rumble didn't have tb but then when he tp it was a bit more awkward yeah um yeah, that was definitely like a, a, a big throw there um but at the, at the, i think in the moment we we're just you know thinking of the the next play i think there were still avenues to to come back i mean we we almost won that last fight, like, <laughs> Miki was asked talking if we could end the game. Uh, and then sadly, like, both Rumble and Astral just survive 1 HP. Yeah. Um, and then we lose out on it. Yeah. The Kalista bug pause. I think he thought he would get the rend on the Rumble, but he had a spear in Silas when he pressed it. So yeah. his E went off, but it didn't go through. Yeah, exactly. I think they went on cooldown. Yeah.
So what are your like initial thoughts like? I guess, I mean, you said you want to just queue up and play again. You were like this close again against BLG. It always just feels like you're always just this close. It must get so frustrating. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely very, very, very annoying. I think we had like a, a, a like we didn't make it out of groups for now, like what, four years? Uh, and it definitely yep. feels very frustrating because uh, we really have high ambitions, but we're just not like living up to it. And I think it's not just like it's not just like one one fight away, right? Today it's it's about like the loss to T1, uh, the loss to to top. Like all these games were definitely winnable. Mm. And if we had just been like that little bit better, we could have taken them. And Sunday would have a very different tournament. So it's it feels bad, but it's like it feels bad in a way that we just need to do better next time, right? And yeah, I mean, it still feels weird to be out, to be honest. It's horrible. Yeah, I feel like it's sometimes... I, dude, I, I wish that Worlds was not so val like I, Because, obviously, MSI was such a shit tournament for so long, it doesn't have the, the prestige, but I wish that, like, MSI was considered by the players as, like, a second Worlds, you know? Or even, like, a more important Worlds. Because, actually, I feel like MSI is a better indicator of how strong your team is than Worlds. Like, Worlds, it's so... There's so much luck involved with Worlds when it comes to the draw, when it comes to the format, when it comes to, like, playing best of threes as opposed to best of fives. And it's like, MSI, I watch it, and I'm like, damn, I feel like the best team always wins MSI. And, like, Worlds is just so strange. It's, like, the the thing about Worlds that I, I always say is it feels like you're gambling, bro. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm gambling when I'm watching Worlds. Like, every time there's a draw, I'm just getting excited. I'm like, I hope this doesn't happen. I hope. Like, it's like, it's like playing a slot machine is how I feel like Worlds is. And it's just so valued, but like, dude, I, I don't know. I I really think that like their performance at MSI it did mean something. It did show that they like are actually a good team. It's like a delay. There's less pressure during MSI. I mean, I just don't think there should be. I actually just think that MSI is a is a better tournament. It's just Worlds is called Worlds. Like, let's say they rename the tournaments and they called MSI Worlds, and they're like, Worlds next year will be in May. And then they just kept the same MSI format and they just called it Worlds. People would be like, yeah, this is a way better tournament. And then MSI was the one at the end of the year. The, the MSI was the one at the end of the year with this format. People would be like, yeah, it's like MSI. It's like a joke. The format's always been shit, like whatever. If they just renamed it, you would think that MSI is like, oh, of course it's way better. Look at all the prestige. Look at how the, the bracket works. Like it would just completely change everyone's mindset with just like a naming change. When if it was the same exact format, same teams were invited, whatever. Like, MSI is just a better tournament format. Like, it hits you, but it doesn't really hit you until it's over properly. You know, when you go home and stuff, that's when it really, like, starts to register in your head. I mean, you've been with this roster for, like, two years now. Did you think this Worlds was stronger than... Remove the world word Worlds and then Genji wins? I mean, it's just like other sport, like, esports have majors, right? If it was just double majors, if they were just called majors. Lost Worlds coming into it? Um, I mean, I was, our, like, our scrims were definitely like quite tough, I think, compared to last year. We were doing like a lot worse, right? I think we were very, like, just very bad at like the whole lane swap situations. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, we, we, had, we learned a lot about the lane swaps, and I think when we started learning better about that, it got easier for us, for sure. Um, and I think as a team, we were more, like, well-rounded. Like, we held our ground better, I think, especially some of these games where we were falling behind, we still made some, some good fights, and... I think if we had just been like a bit more crisp in our early game, I think last year we were good at like some of the early mm. situations. Um, be a bit better on the lane swap situations. I think it could have been um, it could have been different for sure. So I think if we can find a way to 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 play out the whole game, it, it that would be the best for sure. It's crazy, you know, because when you lose, you like look at all of those moments. And you're like, oh, if I did that, yeah. Oh, if I did that, is that what's like going through your head? All those moments from the last game. Yeah, I mean, not even just the last game, right? But I'm, I'm again, I'm thinking back to all the the, the games we had because the of course, I'm feeling like losing to top or losing to T1, like in the moment feels bad, but you're like, you're looking forward because there's another game. But now it's just there's nothing to look forward to. Yeah. It's just kind of looking how this uh, like, oh, god damn, aware. Past, uh, back to the the games we had, and I am for sure like thinking about all the things I could have done better and. I, the things that I want to do better, like next next time, um, and it feels bad because, again, so many years not making it out, and it takes, like, you don't really get a lot of these opportunities with Worlds, right? And I, I really want to to make it, but we didn't even get to the the, the main part of the tournament, so it, yeah. It, yeah, it's it feels bad for sure. Yeah, four years in a row is rough. Like you've been going for God knows how many years, and I feel like you're you've become like the European hope. You know, you as a player, like every time it comes to international, it's you. How's your like energy levels like personally? Because you've been going for a long time. 
Are you like feeling a bit of burnt out? Like this world, you feel a bit tired or do you have energy still in you there? No, I mean, definitely I think we are still full of energy. I think yeah. it's like, as I mentioned, like we still want to just keep playing. And for us, like again, we have high ambitions. So it's like we, 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 we see this tournament as like a long tournament, right? At the end of the day, it will still last another like three weeks or so. So it's like, we, if only thing, we were just ramping up, right? And that's why it feels so bad to just yeah be out already. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not really sure what to say. I think in terms of energy, we still have the, have the ambition, right? So of course, I've been competing for a long time, but I I still haven't done what I wanted to do. And I think until I do that... And that's win Worlds? Yeah, until I do that, it's like, just keep up the grind. So what are you going to do for now? Go home, like, after all of this ender, just back on the back on the grind? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, right? I think we didn't really talk much, or like, I didn't... What, the, look, if there was any point I could convey to fans, it would be that, like, the format is the format because, as fans, people watch it more. That is the only thing they care about. If they could make the most dog shit format of all time and more people watched it, they would. The competitive integrity is way less important to, to a tournament like this or just to the whole esport than the entertainment value of the tournament or, or of the um uh, of the circuit i should say they don't care about competitive integrity it's an entertainment product and they want people to watch as much as possible so when the matches are like this like do you see how many how many viewers are watching that g2 blg match see how many people were watching because it's so important and that is like what they want they want there to be that stress that that feeling of like there's uh, e even if it's not the most like competitive tournament of all time they want there to be that constant stress that makes you keep on tuning in it's like yeah it, it is like gambling like the swiss format is like gambling it makes you feel like you're fucking gambling and you're just like oh shit like what happens today what's the draw gonna be i gotta keep on watching even after the games are over to see what the draw is like that is what the whole point of the esport is is to get more people watching it um as possible so like when you do an MSI format, because there is like more competitive integrity and it's like best of fives, there's a lot more matches that should be just unbalanced. There's like, you know, for example, there was top esports just like 3 0 Team Liquid. There's just a lot of, of matches that just feel kind of hopeless and less people watch those matches. So that is why at Worlds, they try to reduce the amount of matches that you have. And that's why you don't have as many best of fives. You have seven best of fives compared to like, I think, 15 during MSI. Didn't really put much yeah. thought to, to, to gotcha format, literally, bro. To, to what to do now? I think I will probably like see my family because I didn't really get to do that a lot because, of course, we were just grinding it out. Mm. Um, so I think like the main goal is to just talk with the team, like what's up, and like see my family, uh, and then of course prepare for 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 the new season. Man, like the whole of Europe was behind you. Like I can't describe how much support there is for you and the team. Like everyone's sending all their love. And I know that these things are so hard to register. Um, and when you go home, I'm sure it will start to hit you more and more. But just know that like you have the whole region behind you. Like everyone loves you and G2. And next year we'll cheer you on again. Like we're always going to have your back no matter what. Yeah, so like you really you. played your heart out. Like G2 played their hearts out. And I, I feel like I speak for everyone when I say, like, we're so proud of you. Seriously. You and G2 are so proud. How would you know Swiss is best for viewership? I mean, you don't know that Swiss is necessarily best for viewership, but you know that Swiss is better for viewership than Groups was, right? So, like, if they find a different format that will get more people to watch that has even less competitive integrity, maybe they just do that, you know? Proud. Thank you. I mean, for me, it, like, I mean, I appreciate it a lot. I think for me, it also just makes it even worse in the sense that, like, I... I really want to, to show a good performance, right, for yeah. Europe. Uh, and I know that it can be quite tough this last world, so I really appreciate it. Uh, and, and we will do better uh, next year. Oh, we'll be there when you do better. We're here in the tough times, we're here in the good times, man. I won't keep you too long, because I'm sure you want to catch up with the team. So thank you so much. Uh, you. Is there anything you want to say to the, the fans, the chats? I mean, you thank them already, but they're yeah. spamming their I mean, hearts to you. <laughs> a big thank you for sure. I yeah. think it's amazing to, to be able to have this job I have and have the support from, from all of you guys. So I, I really appreciate that a lot. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, I'm also I'm also sorry, right? I think, again, a lot of people were looking towards us and they were really expecting us to, to do well. And I mean, yeah, we just we just lost, right? And we, we didn't make it. We didn't even make it to out of groups. And it's, it's yeah. I mean, we will just do better. I don't know what else to say, to yeah. be honest. You'll do better. Uh, that's that's all exactly what we're going to hear. Thank you so much, Ben. Like, I'll Thank you. give you a hug. I'm so proud of you as well. You did great. Um, yeah. Thank you. See you next year, See then. Ya.
Have fun. See you later. <laughs> Man, I don't know how to approach those conversations. Like, sorry if I uh, if I grieved it a bit. It's so hard to have those conversations, but I really wanted to speak to him. Uh, All right. So, yeah. The LEC should feel sorry, not him. Yeah, I mean, the, the LEC is sorry. Like, G2 is a real team. The other teams are sorry fucking teams. And when people say EU had a hard draw, no, G2 had a hard draw. EU did not have a hard draw. Like, like FlyQuest, sure, had an easy draw. Sure, TL had an easy draw. But, like, the other EU teams had easy draws, bro. Mad had, obviously, BLG first, which was hard. Like, they're a four seed, so there's not many good teams they could play. Like, even if they got hot in real life, it's not much better. They drew PSG and... and, and in Gam, bro, and they lost to both. You know, Fnatic barely beat Gam. That was the only team they beat. That was literally the only fucking team they beat. Like, F Fnatic got Dom1, who is the weakest Asian team. They played against Weibo, which is probably the second weakest Asian team. Lost to both. They, like, pretty much just FF'd the game against Top Esports. Literally zero resistance in that game as well. I mean, if you're not able to beat those teams, if you go back and you think about when EU was good, when EU was good internationally, the second seed and the third seed from EU was fine, bro. Like, if you think about these tournaments, right? Like, let's look at Worlds. Let's look at Worlds 2019 with Splice, for example. Look at the groups. Like, Splice had to play against Gam, J-Team, who was uh, one of the seeds from Taiwan. Fnatic had RNG in their group. And RNG is China number two, bro. Like, Fnatic had the number two Chinese seed in their group. And they fucking were able to go 1-1 with them. They were able to to do something in those games. Like, G2 had a, had a group with, with Cloud9 and Griffin. I guess it was kind of an easy group. But the second seed used to be able to do something from Europe. They used to have some level of, like competitiveness you look at 2018 right even like the third seed so 2018 this is the one where vitality went right you think about vitality vitality beat rng bro like this group is hard that's gen g who's defending world champions champions at this point and rng in the group and vitality ended up losing to cloud nine twice but they beat rng beat gen g you know lost rng here so they went 1-1 versus rng and 1-1 versus gen g and they ended up getting eliminated because they lost to Cloud9. But like they used to be able, this is a three seed and it was competing with the Korean three seed and the um, the Chinese one seed in this tournament. You look at like other places. Okay, G2 had Flash Wolves. That was pretty easy. Fnatic won a group that had High G in it, who was the tournament winners, right? And they ended up being 2-1 in best of ones against the tournament winners. So it's not just that like the format is hard. It's just that EU is worse than they ever were at this point. Like they used to just have more, they used to be just more competitive with the other teams. And I think there just was more resistance in EU. Like even though in 2019 and 2020, G2 was kind of running Fnatic, there was more resistance from that Fnatic lineup. Like that Fnatic lineup was pushing G2 constantly. And you can have a second best team in your region, but you just need to have that push. Same way Gen G dominated Korea for a long period of time, but T1 was still pushing them. You know, they were still competing. They just weren't good enough to beat them. But I just feel like this Fnatic roster, bro, they're, they're such, they're such FFers, man. They're just the FF15 mentality type of team.